This week's video is kind of a continuation of what we were working on before. I'm prepping the shop truck for Easter Jeep Safari and I decided to do a dedicated video specifically to rebuilding the Turbo 400 transmission that is in this truck because a lot of you guys have asked for that video. So this video is 100% Turbo 400 rebuild. But first, let's grab some coffee. <laughs> Turbo 400 is a heavy duty three speed automatic transmission that General Motors and a bunch of other manufacturers actually used it in a pile of vehicles. It is incredibly strong, it is incredibly reliable, and it can handle a lot of abuse off-road. The best part is, is it is incredibly easy to rebuild. In my personal opinion, this is one of the easiest transmissions to rebuild. So if you were going to tackle your very first automatic transmission rebuild, that is the transmission to do it with. And you're going to want to grab a few things to make it happen. The first thing you want is a good manual. This Haynes tech book is a great resource. This is basically a photographic teardown step-by-step -step procedure for a bunch of different transmissions. This is for the 200, the 350, the 400, the 700, and four of General Motors' popular front-wheel drive uh, transmissions. I actually used to use this book when I was a high school shop teacher. I would have the students work through different transmissions using this book on the teardown and the reassembly. Now, that book is very good for just, as I said, general teardown and reassembly. It's not really there for diagnosis. If you have a problem with your Turbo 400, like it's not shifting or something's going on inside of it, then you're gonna need more information and for more information, you can actually get some of these manuals here. This is uh, ATSG, Automatic Transmission Service Group Manual. So this particular one is actually for the Allison 1000-2000 series. Now these give you a little bit more information. They give you electronic diagrams. They'll also give you fluid flow uh, for all the passages inside the transmission so you can know what's going on inside. This is what you would need to, to uh, study if you are going to do any type of diagnosis. I am fortunate in the fact that I know the Turbo 400 inside and out very well. I've rebuilt many of them. This one is functioning fine. I just have a few issues that I want to deal with and that's why I pulled it out of the car. Number one, I have a terrible leak along the side. Quite certain it is the shifter shaft seal. That is a very common problem with these transmissions. There's a seal in there and I believe that it is leaking. That's very difficult to replace when it's in the car. I honestly think that sometimes it's just easier to remove the transmission to do it. And number two, this transmission has now been abused off-road in the shop truck for many, many years. And so I wanna just get in it and basically go through it and make sure that it is all good before I head out to this year's Easter Jeep Safari. And then at the same time, I'm actually going to upgrade the valve body to a true reverse manual valve body with engine braking. Right now, it just has basically a shift kit in it. And the main reason that I'm going to be doing that is to eliminate the vacuum modulator that's on the side of the transmission because it gets a little close to the front drive shaft. But we'll talk about that when we get there. The first thing we're going to do is get this thing in a fixture and onto the bench and the fluid out of it. transmission apart for the first time you want to do a quick visual inspection yes there is some clutch material or some type of material on the bottom of this pan but it's nothing that is concerning to me what I pay more attention to is the color and more importantly the smell of the fluid when transmissions start to burn up the fluid almost smells like a like a charcoal or almost like a burnt toast 
and if the fluid turns black that means it's completely washed out and burnt now in the case of the 400 the good news is is i've driven these 400s where the fluid has become completely overheated completely washed out and completely burned and almost black in color and quite often with a 400 if you pay attention to that fluid get the fluid out and get some new fluid in sometimes the transmission actually still functions because the fluid will actually turn black on its own if it burns up without burning up any of the clutch material if it's black burnt smells like charcoal there is a chance that there may be some burned up clutch material if you don't know the history of the transmission the nice thing about the 400 as i said before is it is incredibly stout and can handle a lot of abuse this part right here is the valve body. This is basically the brains of the transmission. This is what causes the transmission to shift. Uh, back here we have a band apply piston. There's a band in the back. That's what this piston is for. Right in here, this is an accumulator. The accumulator is what actually softens up or firms up your shift. Now on the 400, it uses actually, believe it or not, an electronic kick down. So from the factory, the 400s in a lot of the GM cars have a little electronic micro switch on the gas pedal and when you hit the gas it would energize the solenoid which would allow the transmission to kick down uh, this is the shifter shaft this is what's connected to your gear selector and as you push the transmission through the gears that is obviously park there's reverse actually i think i skipped reverse there's reverse, there's neutral, and then as we go down through the gears. This is called the manual valve. This is moved with the shifter shaft inside the valve body. That's what tells the transmission what gear you are in. And then these two pipes at the back of the valve body are designed to come back here and feed the governor. Now, when you go to a full manual valve body, there's a couple things that you eliminate inside this transmission. We're gonna eliminate that governor because we no longer need it. We're also gonna eliminate this item right here this is called a vacuum modulator this vacuum modulator takes engine vacuum and basically allows the transmission to know how hard you're pushing on the gas how much basically load is on the engine that determines whether to hold it in gear or allow it to shift with a manual valve body we're going to be eliminating that the main reason we're eliminating that in this one is the actual drive shaft comes right by this manual right by this um sorry this um vacuum modulator it comes really close and that's very common on the four-wheel drive applications which is one of the reasons why we eliminate it you can see i already have a low car locking dipstick in this transmission this is a great thing to get in any transmission or any engine so now the next step is to remove this valve body from the bottom of the transmission we're going to make sure that we pay attention to the location of all of these bolts because depending on the transmission some of these bolts are a specific length in the 400 they are not they're all the same length but they are a couple of them are at different sizes so we're going to remove this valve body and then what i do is i keep it right in the pan from the transmission you can see i put all the bolts in the pan here we're going to unbolt the valve body remove it from the transmission just set it in the pan and we can continue for the transmission apart and you see uh, a valve body spacer plate gasket like this I should say this is the spacer plate right here this is a piece of steel that goes in between the valve body and the transmission uh, main case 
uh, each one of these passages in here, think of them like a, they're basically what's called a hydraulic circuit. Think of it like a hydraulic hose in your uh, full hydraulic steering system. Each one of these basically allows fluid to travel and apply pressure to different parts inside the transmission to allow them to shift and work. If you take it apart and you see one of these uh, spacer plate gaskets that's got printing on it like this, that's a telltale sign that someone's been in this transmission before. I know someone has because I was the person that was inside of it before. But you'll often see these aftermarket uh, spacer plate gaskets. You do not want to reuse spacer plate gaskets. They get hard, they get hot, they get brittle, and they tear. And if they tear and if there's a tiny little leak, that can cause a huge issue in the transmission hydraulic circuit. Now this show, or this, um, this video is not necessarily going to be a how the Turbo 400 works. This is just going to be basically tearing it down, identifying the parts, how to install the manual valve body, and then rebuild it. Uh, we could spend hours discussing how automatic transmissions work, and we'll do a little bit of it as we go through. But just so you understand, what happens inside an automatic transmission is right here at the front of the transmission is what's called a pump. So this pumps fluid through the transmission. The transmission fluid does a couple of jobs. Not only does it lubricate everything inside the transmission, it also acts like a hydraulic pressured fluid. So each, as I said before, each one of these passages in here is like a hydraulic circuit, just like you would have like the hydraulic hose that goes down from your steering gear down to your steering ram in ram assist steering system. Fluid is basically being pushed through these passages and it's doing things like, as I said before, there's a piston right here that applies the rear band. There's a piston right here that applies the front band and there's fluid passages that go through here and do things like apply clutches, apply bands, release clutches, release bands and that what that's what allows the transmission to shift. You can spend time basically if you need to diagnose uh, the transmission you can actually trace all of these hydraulic passages. You can use that ATSG uh, service manual like I showed you. It will show you every single passage. So let's say for instance you have a transmission that is uh, not functioning in third gear and no matter what you do you can't figure out what it is. If you trace the passage you may find it blocked or a problem in inside that passage. Oh, look who's coming in to say hi. Say hello, Zelda. Hi, Zelda. Say hi, say hi, say hi, 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 hi. Such a good shot, puppy. Anyway, Zelda's gonna learn how to rebuild the transmission. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let this transmission drain and I, apparently I'm gonna go throw the ball for the dog and then we'll get back to this rebuild. Now inside this hydraulic circuit, depending on the model, you're going to find a certain amount of check balls. And sometimes you'll even find check balls sitting on top of the spacer plate when you lift the valve body off. But here in this transmission, you can see I got a check ball right here. If you can see that, there's a little check ball right there. There's a check ball right in there. Uh, there should be one other one, I think in this transmission. I'm not 100% sure where it is in this one. This, uh, those check balls are basically used as little one-way valves in the hydraulic circuit. What happens is when the fluid starts to pump through that hydraulic circuit and goes to go through the spacer plate, it'll pick up that check ball and push up on the check ball and close the opening inside the spacer plate. You can see the spacer plate has these little holes in it all over the place and these holes allow the fluid to transfer from the transmission case up into the valve body itself and what happens is when the fluid enters this section of the transmission right here and tries to go from the transmission case up into the valve body it pushes the check ball up and will seal against that hole preventing the fluid from flowing now that's just all part of the hydraulic circuit one of the most popular things to do inside a transmission is if you install a shift kit, sometimes a shift kit will have you drill some of those spacer plate holes a little bit larger to allow the fluid to get through there faster. They'll have you remove some check balls from the system and sometimes they'll have them change them from a different from one size to the other. This transmission I believe only has two check balls in it because right now I have like a mild shift kit in it, but I am going to be converting over to a full manual valve body and that's going to completely change the location of those check balls inside this transmission. So what I'm going to do now is pull the check balls out and then I'll tip it up, drain the fluid, and then I'll pull the pump off.
different types of, uh, actually there's a few different types of uh, transmission pumps out there. This is what's called a gear pump. So there's like two gears in here, that basically mesh. That's what allows the uh, fluid to flow, kind of like an old school uh, small block Chevy oil pump. You ever seen one of those? Some of the newer transmissions use what's called a vein style pump. Uh, I think I'm gonna take apart the 4L60 that ate it inside the Colorado, and you can get a look at that pump. We take it apart, but I'll break that pump down just to inspect it before we install it. Six one half does either if you tear down the pump, in my personal opinion. If the transmission's functioning fine, you know, there's really no reason to take the pump apart. I'm gonna pull it apart uh, just to inspect it, just to make sure it's good. I think it's fine, but I also wanna show you how that gear pump uh, is working but now you can see inside the transmission we're finally into the actual parts of the transmission that actually do the transmission shifting so these are what's called drums inside here there are some clutches there's also a band down in there that you can't see but we'll get that when we get there but now we're basically going to do with the transmission sitting vertically like this we're just going to start pulling everything out of the transmission so at this point everything comes out of the top of the transmission until we get to what's called the center support and i'll show you that when we get there <laughs> Inside the 400, there's clutch packs. So we basically have one clutch pack here. This clutch pack sat in those lugs inside the case itself. And then we have two clutch packs right here that are sitting inside these drums. This band sits around this lower drum. Things that we're looking for when we are trying to determine if a clutch pack is good or bad is basically if it's burnt. That's basically the telltale sign. So if we take a quick look at this one, we can see there's some slight scoring on this disc but if i remember correctly when i rebuilt this transmission that was already there this is basically just a super small disc that takes up a little bit of space inside the transmission and then you can see these clutch packs although worn they are in still perfectly good shape these would normally be jet black because they're covered in teflon they're what's called a choline steel but you can see that the teflon has been wearing off as the transmission has been used which is perfectly normal for the transmission none of these clutch packs look burnt these all look good one thing that i will say when you take a transmission apart this is the hardest thing to remember. When you take a transmission apart, you want to make sure that you put everything back in the order that you took it apart. So when I take it apart and I lay it out on the bench, I make sure to always stack everything the same way it came out of the transmission case. So in this case, what I have here is this steel was on the bottom and then I had friction steel, friction steel, and then I had this thick pressure plate and then I had this snap ring. I placed it on the bench like this so when it goes back into the transmission i know that it all goes back in like this same with these drums this one came out first this one came out second but i immediately stacked this one back on top because there is a small thrust washer in there and i want to make sure that i don't lose that or misplace it on the bench so if i simply place that uh, input shaft and input drum on top i ensure that it's not going to go anywhere now we can talk about the center support the center support is basically a, a item that is fixed inside the center of the transmission and it is the only place you're going to need a special tool to take apart a turbo 400 when i say special tool you're going to need a 12 point socket to take this bolt out of this hole right here it's very hard to see because it's a black bolt it's like a black hole that's a 12 point bolt and that bolt is anchoring this center support right here you can see there's some teflon rings on the center support this is basically a hydraulic item there's a piston in there that's what applies that clutch that we just took out of there that center support is very important also what can happen with the turbo 400s is there's an issue with what's called zippering the case where that bolt will break and this center support will spin inside the case and basically tear this case all apart which is one of the reasons why you see a lot of people who are with high horsepower applications switching to an aftermarket case because they've actually improved the lug design on those cases so now I can take that center support bolt out and then I can lift the center support out and then after that, it's all planetary gears. The, what I'm after right now is the whole main shaft. So the main shaft goes all the way through into the output. You cannot take that out without first removing the governor. So you need to get the governor in there because it splines on. If this is a two-wheel drive transmission, you'd also have to remove the speedo, uh, speedo gear and the speedo drive assembly as well. 
because that would keep the transmission from coming up. So I'm going to take the governor off and we'll be able to fetch it. We have a uh, one-way clutch or stator in here. You can see there's little balls falling out of it. I'm gonna be replacing that anyway. I'll show you what that does. Obviously, we have our center support, our pump, our valve body, and our clutch stacks. We have our clutch, clutch, and clutch here, and now we have a 100% empty case. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and basically clean the case. I'm gonna take the case over to the parts washer, give it a good cleaning. I'm going to replace that shifter shaft seal, uh, we'll get everything all cleaned up. Not going to take the uh, modulator out yet because I don't want the little modulator valve. There's actually a little valve inside here that is right here. The modulator valve ends up staying, little modulator valve right here. This valve ends up staying inside the case even when we remove this. And so I don't want to run the risk of this falling out while I'm cleaning it. So I'm going to take it over to the parts washer, give it a good clean inside and out. Uh, and then, as I said, I'll replace that shifter shaft seal. And then we can uh, look at the parts and start reassembly. All right, so I put a new shifter shaft seal in here. Uh, if you do take a 400 apart, you'll notice that there's actually a nail that holds uh, the shifter shaft into place. Don't freak out about that. That's actually from the factory. GM needed a hardened pin to keep that shifter shaft in place, and the best thing to use was actually a nail. So when you see that nail in there, that's just normal. It basically just gets inserted through here, catches the groove in the shifter shaft, and then you just bend it down so the shifter shaft doesn't move around. I went ahead, pulled off uh, that um, vacuum modulator and put the cover plate in, and now we are ready to basically start reassembling this transmission. Now, I said we would take a look at some of this stuff and these are these are the basically we start by um, there's a thrust washer that's going to go in the bottom of the transmission and this thrust washer is going to go in the very bottom of the case it's the first thing you're going to put back in and then there's also this uh, basically uh, um, bushing now it sits on the very bottom of this set of planetary gears and locks into these little dogs right here. Uh, your transmission rebuild kit may come with a new one of these. We'll check that first. But what I wanted to do is I want to check some of these planetaries out. So I'm going to lift this out. Okay. Lift that out. There is a bearing that sits right on here. The other part of this bearing is on the center support. And then this piece comes down through there. And there's that bushing that drops into there. You want to just check this sun gear right here. Make sure that you have uh, good, no damage to those teeth. You can check the uh, ring gear as well as the planets inside. If everything spins freely, it's in good shape. 
and you don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this system back in along with this. But as you can see, you can see that this is, this is a sprag. This is basically like a one-way clutch. So the part of the transmission that engages into this, which is part of the center support, allows this drum to turn one way, but not turn the other way. And that's what these little uh, rollers do. They actually go up on these ramps when it tries to turn and basically locks and holds it. They're held in place with these little springs. You can see that some of them just fell apart. That sometimes happens when the, you take the transmission apart. It's not a big deal. The rollers are still in good shape, but I believe that my rebuild kit comes with a new sprag, so I'm going to go ahead and break it out and install that. Whenever I'm rebuilding a transmission, I always get all my parts from Monster Transmission. I get what's called a Monster in the Box kit, and that is basically every single piece that I need to rebuild the transmission. So it's all new heavy duty red Alto clutch discs that those are designed to handle higher heat. Choline steels, those are the Teflon coated steels. Comes with a new band, obviously new filter. All the new bushings in case I need to replace them. Comes with a new vacuum modulator even though I'm not using it. Pickup tube, all the bearings for inside the transmission, all the thrust washers. And I upgraded to the full manual valve body that's going to go in this transmission. And then this is the Sprag that I was showing you before that we're going to replace inside that transmission. I've used these monster in the box kits for a lot of my transmission rebuilds. And I just really, really like them. I think that they, uh, the nice thing is that it's one-stop shopping. Everything you need is available from them. If you want to buy a fully rebuilt transmission, you can do that, or you can go ahead and just get the rebuild kit from them and rebuild it. And then you can spec stuff. If you want a, a high stall torque converter, you can get that. If you want a full manual valve body with the engine braking or without engine braking or the trans brake, or there's even a two-speed valve body for the 400 to turn it into a two-speed transmission, believe it or not, they offer that. Um, and they can give you, and also hard parts. If you take the transmission apart and you find they have something broken, you can call them out and say, hey, I need this part, and they'll be able to source it for you. So they have all the parts that you need to basically rebuild your transmission to the level of performance that you need. I just like to rebuild them myself. That's why I get parts for them. Or you can have them rebuild it for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start reassembling this transmission. I'm going to start by uh, basically dropping all the planetaries back in. And when we get to the changes that we need to make for our valve body, that's when I'll start showing you more stuff. So the first change we need to make for our uh, manual valve body is I have to remove this second ceiling ring from this center support. And it's just a steel ceiling ring, basically interlocks, so almost like a piston ring. And you just undo the interlock and then we can just walk the ceiling ring off of here. And then that's gone, just like that. That's the one. It clearly shows in the instructions how to do it, which is nice. Basically just says remove that one. Uh, ceiling ring. Um, depending on the transmission manufacturer, sometimes they want you to do swap those uh, ceiling rings out for Teflon ceiling rings. Um, I've run both. Um, the Teflon ceiling rings definitely wear less. They are a little bit harder to get on because you're kind of stretching them as you put them on and then you want them to conform back. Um, there are some tricks to do that. Some guys will boil them in hot water to expand them and then let them compress, but I've just had good luck just leaving the steel uh, ceiling rings in there. So that's the first thing that I had to do for the uh, manual valve body. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky because even though the, all these pieces came out individually, what has to happen now is the center support has to be dropped back on to this stack and then this entire stack gets lowered down inside the transmission case. But before we can do that, we have to put the rear band back in uh, because this all slides down through the rear band. And when you do that, you have to make sure that you engage the band with the lugs in the case. And then one other thing that I should point out, uh, you, this is why you really pay attention to when you take a transmission apart. Some 400s have an additional uh, little circlip here. That's a spacer circlip. Some 400s have that, some don't. Uh, so if you take your turbo 400 apart and you see this very, very thin little snap ring in here, you want to make sure that it goes back into this position because it was put in there from the factory. If you don't have that, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong in the transmission. Some had it and some didn't. So as I said before, what I'll do now 
is I'll put the center support onto there and then I have to lower it all down. And I have to make sure when I do that, I have to make sure that this bolt hole lines back up with the bolt hole in the case. And at the same time, I have to make sure that this uh, thrust bushing stays attached to the bottom of that stack of gears. You'll know that everything is lined up correctly if that center support bolt is lined up perfectly. If that hole is sitting too high, then your rear uh, uh, thrust washer may have twisted or something, but you want that to be lined up perfectly so you can easily take the center support bolt and just screw it in with your fingers. The kit, as I said before, comes with all these Raybestos uh, Red Alto clutch discs, as well as new choline steels. Before you put those in, you want to make sure that you've properly soaked them in some transmission fluid. And I'm using the Monster Transmission, it's called Burn Rubber Brewing Transmission Fluid. It's their proprietary fluid that they include with their Monster in the Box kit. Uh, the kit also comes with this new transmission pan, so I just use it to basically soak all of the clutches. And then, because I'm at the point right now where I can start installing clutches into the transmission, this is when I will make the switch from old to new. This is where keeping the bench organized really pays off. If you remember, I basically took this out and set it down upside down to the way it went into the transmission. Now this plate I'm gonna reuse. This is basically just a wave plate. It's designed to eliminate some of the stress on those clutches. So that's gonna go in first. And then I'm going to be replacing this clutch. So what I'll do is I'll come over to my pan and I'll look for one that matches. And I think they're on the bottom of this stack. So there we go. So, then what I do is, if this would go in the transmission next, I take this and throw it away and grab a fresh one out of the case, drop it in there, and then the same thing here, I'd be looking for a new steel, which is the same as this one right here. So this one goes away, steel goes in, clutch goes away, clutch goes in, steel goes away. New steel goes in, clutch goes away, new clutch goes in. So after not alternating between steels and frictions, I put the pressure plate on the top and then the snap ring goes into place. Repeat the same process for the clutches that are inside this drum. I'll just be inspecting them and basically um, replacing them with the new coin steel and red alto discs. So to do that, so I just remove the snap ring.
drum, we have to make some changes for our uh, manual valve body. So I gotta completely disassemble this drum, including taking the piston out, and then I'll show you how those work. The way that this works is uh, this is the piston inside this clutch pack and so it sits down inside this drum. Fluid comes in from the side and pushes up on this piston. What seals the piston to the drum are these little lip seals. So you can see there's a lip seal here and there's a lip seal on the outside of this drum as well as well as a lip seal on the inside of the drum. So what happens is fluid comes in pushes this piston up it squeezes these clutches together and that's what basically allows it to grab on whatever it's engaged into and then when it's time to release these springs actually push it back down now according to the instructions for this particular manual valve body I need to remove the lip seal from inside the drum and then I also need to replace the springs with the springs that came in the kit Another reason why you want to always keep track of how many steels and how many uh, frictions you have is because depending on the model of the transmission or the year or when it was produced, sometimes you have more frictions and steel. So in this case, I ended up with two left over. Now that doesn't mean there's a problem because I was able to basically keep track of clutch steel, clutch steel as it went together and all my tolerances checked out. And by tolerances, what I mean is you're basically measuring how much the clutch it moves up and down before it hits this pressure plate. Now for this direct drum with this reverse manual valve body kit, it says I need 50 thousandths of an inch there, which I do. I have between 50 and 70, I have 55 thousandths. And so that's good. So now I can go ahead and start assembling these pieces into the transmission as well. On the pump, there's a few seals. There's a big rubber O-ring that goes around the outside. There is a gasket that goes between the pump and the actual housing of the transmission. So that's gonna go in there. And then there's the input seal or torque converter seal at the front. And then there's also these little pump washers. Now these are pump bolt washers. They actually have little rubber, uh, rubber coating on them to help seal the pump. Now, as I said before, 
this transmission was functioning fine, so I know the pump is good. I never really had any issues with this transmission working. I was just tearing it apart to get a good look at it. I also put in that reverse manual valve body. So I'm not gonna tear into the pump because as I said before, the transmission was working fine, and if the transmission is working fine, then the pump is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those seals, the gasket, pump bolts, drop the pump in, and then the internals of the transmission are done, and we can move on to the actual valve. <laughs> This gasket will only line up one way. You just want to make sure that you're not blocking off any of the fluid passages, which I'm not. And all the bolt holes are lined up perfectly, which is good. So at this point I'm just following along now, we're at the point with the valve body, so I need to remove the rear servo piston, remove and discard the two rings from the reverse accumulator and install the band release spring. So that is, this is the accumulator that they're speaking of, I pulled the two uh, basically sealing rings off of that and it goes back in and then I take, this is the uh, reverse spring that was in it, this is now the reverse spring that's going in it, so that is going in there. and. All right, so now that can go back in. This goes in with, uh, there's this metal gasket. There's a new one of these with the, with the kit. So we'll replace that gasket and it just goes in here and that is what engages that band. Step. All right, so as the instructions indicated, I've gone ahead and I've done my rear band, I've done my front servo for my front band, and it came with a new uh, piston to go in there as well as a new rod, had to follow the instructions for that. And now I can put, oh, and I only use one check ball that came with the kit, it's a 3 8 check ball. And now I'll put my spacer plate gaskets down and get them lined up. Then the actual spacer plate goes on, that goes on like so. Then the next gasket, we'll go on top of that. We'll get everything lined up a little bit better. And then we'll drop the valve body on. Now this is the first time I've used this type of valve body. This is basically just a big old billet aluminum block with passages cut in it. Uh, every other time I've done one of these manual valve bodies, the valve body that I've installed has looked like a valve body. So this is a new one for me. So hopefully it works out okay. Um, I mean, I think it should be okay. I looked it up, it's the right valve body, it says uh, reverse manual, full engine braking, and I follow the instructions, so everything should be okay. So we'll drop that on now, bolt it down. Uh, when we do put the valve body on, you'd want to make sure that you line up the slot in the manual valve in the valve body with the actual slot on here, and then I'll have to steal this uh, 
this uh, spring because that, what, that's what rides on here to get the detents for changing your gears. And that'll be it. And at that point in time, the transmission will be fully rebuilt. You're looking for three distinct clunks when this goes in. You'll know it's all the way down when the distance between here and here is the same distance from the block to the back of the flex plate with enough room to get the bolt in and out. And with that, that Turbo 400 is now completely rebuilt and ready to go back into the Jeep. Hope you've enjoyed this Turbo 400 rebuild video. Just remember, uh, if you're gonna tackle one of these, uh, Worst case scenario, you're going to burn up a transmission. It's not the end of the world. Uh, you just got to take it apart and rebuild it again. The only problem is in a four-wheel drive truck's a little bit of work to get it in and out. Uh, a couple things that I like to do when I put the reverse manual valve body in or any manual valve body is I flip the governor plate backwards when I bolt it on the transmission. That's just to tell any future builders uh, if they're got this Jeep in for service and someone says it doesn't shift well they can quickly crawl up there look at that see that governor plate in there backwards and be like oh it's got a reverse manual valve body or a manual valve body of some type just something I do for the future guys working on this thing all right so I'm going to stuff this thing back in the Jeep next time you see it it'll be at Easter Jeep Safari